Good morning and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii and my fifth episode of Movement Matters. Movement Matters covers topics dealing with the health and wellness of your body. If this is your first time joining us, I'm Christine Linders. I'm a licensed physical therapist and been practicing physical therapy for over 23 years in California, New York, Connecticut, and now in Hawaii in a variety of settings. I'm a board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. I'm certified in applied functional science and I have my manual therapy certification. My show Movement Matters is designed to bring you the most cutting edge and effective treatment strategies so you can help your body perform better, decrease pain, and get back to doing the things that you love. Today's topic is decrease stress, improve your sleep, and your health. I'm delighted to have a very special guest calling in today from San Diego, Sharon Schusterman. Sharon has been practicing speech and language pathology for over 27 years. In today's episode, Sharon and I will be discussing the harmful effects stress and lack of sleep have on our minds and our bodies. And by the end, you'll learn several strategies proven to decrease stress and pain, improve your quality of sleep, your memory, and your health. Welcome, Sharon, and thank you for joining us on Movement Matters. Chris, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you today. And I'm so glad to be talking to you today about essential oils. There we yes, go. Yes, I want to... I'm excited too. So I have known Sharon since I became a physical therapist. We worked at the same place together and I went out there in February to clean out my condo before moving to Hawaii. And I had just had shoulder surgery in November and I had to paint and clean and get everything ready for renters to be moving in. And I was staying with Sharon. I got to Sharon's house. I was exhausted from the red eye. I hadn't slept leading up to the trip. I wasn't sleeping well and my arm was killing me. Both of my arms were killing me from painting. And Sharon opened up this little box and kit with all these little bottles of essential oils. And she rubbed some cream on my arm and set a diffuser with essential oils. And I slept better than I'd slept in a while. And my arm felt a lot better the next day. So I wanted to ask Sharon, how that helped me, how that supported me. So Sharon, what did you give me? What it was that? How does that work? So Chris, I'm so excited to share with you my journey with essential oils. You know, you were telling me about some of the things that were going on in your life and I was just happy to be able to share with you. Yeah. So I just wanted to tell you how I first, if it's okay, I want to tell you how I got started with it. Yeah, how did you get started? And because you said you'd been involved for a couple of years and I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I got started. I was about maybe two and a half, three years ago. You know, I started seeing all these ads and, and um, seeing essential oils on shelves in the grocery store and seeing them online and and i and you know chris you and i've been in the working in the medical field all of these years yeah. and we've just seen so much around us right yes we and have. so i decided well i have these things that you know i'd like to support in my body and my my family and my friends and let me see what this is all about and i had seen a friend of mine who's also a speech language pathologist she had been sharing on social media oh. um, her experiences yeah and i i was just seeing her use them in so many different ways and and i thought huh this is really interesting i i'm gonna reach out to her so i did and it was great i said you know i've got some things in my life and she said hey let me let me tell you about it so you know we got talking and um i found out that she uses um essential oils from a company called young living oh and um you know, again, in the medical field, Chris, we're all about like researching stuff and learning as much as we can, especially yes, we we're going to put it on our bodies. So in my research, I found that this company has been around 26 years. Wow, that's a long which time. Which is huge. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and I said, you know, if I'm going to put this, these oils, if I'm going to use them on my body um, or smell them, you know, in the uh, diffuser, I better know, you know. Are they good quality? So I just want to let your listeners know that um, it is important to check on the quality. And the great thing about 
Young Living is that um, their process is so fantastic from the time that they plant the seeds, they have their own farms. Wow. Um, they're pre-invested in the whole process and, and how, and you can even go, I'm so excited one day to go onto one of their farms and actually see the process. It's so cool. Well, please and then, let me know when you do, because I want to take that I trip will. with you. It would be an, it would be a great fun trip. And, um, and then the process of how they bottle it. And then they have these outside companies that come in and test their purity and their quality. And if they don't like what they see, Young Living will throw it out. And this is a third party independent testing. So, That's you know, after that research, yeah, after that research, I said, I think I'm going to, you know, try this one out. You, you know, you are getting what you want and especially for what you're trying to use it for. I think that's fantastic. And I'm so grateful that there's people that out there like you who do the research and the extensive research because you've done all the work for all of us. I know there's a lot of different oils out there and essential oils I've seen since I've been in Hawaii. A lot of people are into healthy living here and they're using them. And I had those questions until I tried your products. How, how do you pick one? And you've just uh, answered that for me. So I guess I want to know now too, what did you put in those concoctions that you used on me? There was a couple things. And for someone like me too, who's new to it, how do you, is there certain oils that maybe support different things, like some for supporting sleep, some for calming your mind, some for decreasing anxiety or getting rid of pain? That's what I want to know. Yes, absolutely. That's the great thing that I've been learning and I still have so much to learn. So, um, you know, as I, of course, you know, as I have have these things in my life, that's how I learn, you know, so I'm, yes. I saw, I listened to you and, and, you know, most, a lot of people have that trouble sleeping on occasion, you know, and um, I just started doing research. I found out that there are oils like cedarwood and lavender wow. and and actually i i meant to tell you so my husband has been having a lot of trouble sleeping and you know he was like what is this oil thing you're getting into and does it really <laughs> help and, you know I I got all kinds of, <laughs> right right so he'd been going for a long time trying different things and I just took lavender and, and, you know, a lot of people are familiar with lavender and heard about it. And I just gave him lavender and he, he puts it on the bottom of his feet. Um, I, there's, there's different places on your body. I've found out that are great places to put the oils on. I think, and, I, tried um, the, I think when you gave me some of those bottles to take home here to Hawaii, I was rubbing some in my hand before sleep, putting some on my neck and just, sniffing it a little bit under my nose because I didn't have one of those diffusers. So I didn't know that you could put it on your feet. I just was, I think, doing what maybe you showed me. I'm not sure. So that's good to know. Where, where else can you put it? Yeah. So there's what I've learned is there's three different ways that we can benefit from how the oils work and how they help and support us. And one way is to a diffuser and um, if you don't have one obviously that's okay. okay like you don't have one so you can put it topically on your skin and when you start getting into it you start learning like what's the safe way to use it because mm -hmm. um, you know we have to all keep in mind that some people might have sensitive skin and so um, so I've you know been experimenting with that too and you start really slow I mean the one thing is people need to know you got to really start slow and okay. um, That's a good point. so on your skin and then um, ingesting it ingesting is another way but uh -oh. you know I would say I I use on my skin and and diffusing probably the majority of the time and um, I do want to say Chris that that people should check in with their doctor okay. and you know just make sure that like I said you start slow it's but it's also good. good yep it's always good to check in with your doctor that's right check in with your doctor that's right so anyway yeah so with my husband he just loves his lavender and <laughs> if I if he runs out boy I know it but um yeah, just, you know, through experimentation and what works for your body may not work for somebody else. And and it's just so much fun. You know, you get to smell these wonderful oils and try them out. And 
I think you know, I love it. I think that's great, and I love what you've given me. And since we're on the topic of sleep, and I know that Jay is happily sleeping like a baby thanks to his lavender, right? <laughs> well, right. Um, I remember about three years ago, I went to a seminar on stress and sleep, and it's a little strategy that I've been using ever since, where the presenter, Pauline Lucas, she's a physical therapist, was talking about mindfulness meditation and stress and how stress impacts your sleep, but stress also impacts the brain organs, the hippocampus, which is your memory slash learning center, and your amygdala, which is your fear or fight flight center. And she showed some good information and slides of research that had been done that showed when people were chronically stressed for a long period of time, that that brain organ, organ, the amygdala, actually increased in size on their brain scans, and the hippocampus, or learning center, or memory center, has decreased in size. And do you remember me telling you about that? Because I started doing a mindfulness app, which greatly helped me to decrease my stress and then get some good sleep a couple of years ago. And I think I told you about that. You did, Chris, and it's so funny because right after you told me that, um, a lot of the work that I do, you know, are people in rehab centers and they've been through a lot of trauma. And so as I'm helping them, I'm, you know, figuring out that these people are really under a lot of stress and they're not able to really benefit the maximum of their therapy. And I've started incorporating some things I could help them to help with their stress level. And when you told me that, what I love about it is because I help people basically with their cognitive recovery, their brain function recovery. And you were talking with sharing with me the the research that showed actual changes, then I said, I'm going to start using this. So I right away downloaded a mindfulness app I share it with my patients, I go through it with them. And they'll tell me, I'll come back the next day. They'll say, they'll say, wow, I slept so good last night. (laughs) I'm glad that it works for a lot of people. I know I've shared it with my patients as well. So I want to skip back to essential oils just for a second. Um, What was that salve or cream that you put on my arm that night in February because I remember asking you about it because it it really felt good putting on and I couldn't believe how I felt afterward. I was surprised. I was surprised. What is that? So Young Living has has put together some various things that where you don't, you know, you take the, the guesswork out of it and um, they've already put things together, formulated um, different things that you can just get. And they actually have something, a cream called um, Cool Azul Pain Cream. Oh. And that's cool and, and I've had that, it's amazing. I've had that um, that container of it for like two years, over two years. I need to and, write that um, down. <laughs> Yeah, and I just put a little bit on you, and you, you know, you you thought it was great. So, um, yeah, that one in particular is is really great. It's a cream with the oils in it. I like that. I like that. So, so Sharon, we're gonna go to a brief break. Everyone, this is Movement Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. We're speaking with Sharon Susterman, a speech and language pathologist, about sleep, stress, and how to decrease those and improve your health. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can 
have a better lifestyle, eat healthier and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you and uh, aloha. Hi, we're back. This is Movement Matters. I'm Christian Linders, and we're talking to very special guest, Sharon Schusterman, who's talking about essential oils and how they can support your body to improve your sleep, decrease stress. And so, Sharon, uh, I was saying how I took some of these essential oils and used them on my body and really felt like I had noticed the difference. And so we were talking about Young Living and this cool Azul cream that I also rubbed on my arm. How can I find, or how can anyone find, where to get this beautiful, beautiful products? Good question. The the best way, Chris, I've you know I've learned that people really need a lot of support because it's so overwhelming. Yes. And there's so much to learn. And when I first signed on, I really relied on my friend Amanda. Okay. You know who did guide me with Young Living. So I think getting in touch with you um, would be a great way to start. And then you you can talk, we can talk one-on-one -on -one with people. I think that's the best way because like I said, you know, it's so overwhelming. There's so much information. There's so much information. And I also wanted you to touch on, cause I'm just remembering that for people like myself and yourself who are busy and when we first get started, we might not know what to put on our bodies. I think you mentioned that Young Living has some pre-concocted blends of things that are used to support different things. Is that correct? Oh, they do. Absolutely. I've, Good. I've discovered some of these and I use them to, to support me. Like right before I came on with you, you know, oh. of course I knew I was going to be nervous <laughs> and, and worried. And so I put on, they have a blend called peace and calming. Ah, Isn't that a great name? That sounds wonderful. So, yeah. So it has five different, wonderful great smelling oils in there and i already knew that young living did all the work and they put those together and it gives me peace and calm <laughs> so it's great you know they have those kinds that that take that guesswork out but then all the other stuff it's so overwhelming the one-on-one -on -one is just the best okay well that's that's great so Sharon, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on to Think Tech Hawaii and tell us about essential oils. I hope to have you on the show again soon. Yes, thank you so much, Chris. And I just want to say what a wonderful physical therapist you are, too. Oh. In case your listeners don't already know that, you're thank wonderful. You. Mahalo. You Mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs> All right, have a great day. Thank you. All right. You too. Bye bye, right, Sharon. Bye bye. Okay, so that was great to talk to Sharon about essential oils and how they can really help to support your body. So in the next 10 minutes, I want to talk a little bit more about the stress and how that impacts your sleep. So if we go to slide two, this is a great image of what I feel like oftentimes at the end of the day where I'm stressed out. And so if anybody else feels like that, man, woman, student, you name it, that's a tough place to be. So what can you do to get to slide number three and how you feel when you look at this next picture of a beautiful sunrise? So I would like you all to think about what you felt like and what you feel like when you look back at slide number two, the very stressed out, the very frazzled, picture of the woman. When I look at that picture, I feel a little bit tense. Maybe my heart rate speeds up a little bit. And I don't like that feeling. And that's a feeling that we feel when we're in a hurry or we're getting ready for the next day at work and we know we have a long day or we've had a tough day taking care of our kids and the next day you gotta wake up and do it again because someone has a cold and you have a cold or you're preparing for that important job interview, or you're a student and you have an exam and you feel like this person the night before, what do you do to calm yourself down so that you can get a good night's sleep to prepare yourself for the next day's activity? So I'll get to that in a minute. Now let's look at slide number three again, the image of the sunrise. How do you feel when you look at that image? I feel like taking a deep breath, 
I can imagine the sound of the waves lapping up onto the beach. And not everybody likes the beach, but it's a pretty pleasant photo for most of us to look at. So the next photo, slide four, is another one. Now, not everybody surfs, but that kind of evokes a sense of calm in me. And for each person, there could be an image or a sound or something that can help you wind down before you get ready for sleep, even though you have a big test the next day or you know you've got a, an impossible day that you have to handle and you need to be at your best for it. So the National Sleep Foundation recommends that adults get between seven to nine hours of sleep every night in order to perform at their best the next day. And that's a lot. And I remember I used to sleep five hours and say, oh, I'll sleep, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead. But, you know, that's that's a tough thing to say. I was young. People get harassed a little bit if they say, oh, I need nine hours of sleep. And we think, oh, maybe they're a slacker. I've got to get it all done. But that's not true. We need sleep. Sleep is when we recover. Sleep is when we form the memories and make the learning into memories that we've had the day, <clears throat> excuse me, that we've had the day before. And for high school age kids, the National Sleep Foundation recommends eight to 10 hours of sleep. So <clears throat> let's look at slide number five, which talks about, <clears throat> excuse me, which talks about some of the effects that stress and chronic stress has on our body. So increased anxiety, depression, digestive problems such as irritable bowel syndrome, insomnia where you just can't get to sleep, memory impairment or decreased focus the next day or the day after that. Uh, chronic stress can cause weight gain with the release of that hormone cortisol too much in our system. It can cause increased pain in our bodies if we're not getting enough sleep or an increased awareness of pain in our body where the pain may seem more severe to us than it actually is. It can cause an increased risk for type 2 diabetes, and it can cause sexual dysfunction. So I think after seeing that, a lot of it holds true for us who want to get better sleep because maybe we experience some of those side effects from not having enough sleep. And so Sharon talked a little bit about essential oils and how they can support your body with the lavender and all these different things. I'm not sure what was in mine. I'll have to do a second show on that to get yourself calm. You can also do some deep breathing. It's recommended to get off of your devices where there's that blue light 35 to 45 minutes before you're going to sleep so that you're getting that release of the natural hormone melatonin that kicks in depending on what time zone. I was reading some studies around nine o'clock at night and takes about 90 minutes to get into full force. So you want to be getting ready for sleep being calm, not checking emails, not watching a stimulating show, just kind of getting into that process of sleep. So I had the benefit of attending a lecture by Pauline Lucas, who's a physical therapist three years ago, and that's where Sharon and I were discussing the role of the hippocampus and the amygdala in our brain and what happened with chronic stress. And Sharon was taken aback, and so was I, by the brain scans that showed that after 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes of mindfulness meditation daily, people's brain scans improved where that fear center, the amygdala, actually had become smaller in size, and the hippocampus, the learning center, the one we want to be in good fitness and good working order, actually increased in size for the mindfulness, with the mindfulness every day. So I took it on myself because there was a slide in her talk that said, even for beginners who don't do it that long, you can have a benefit. So I was going through a very tense and stressful time in my life a few years ago. So I started doing three to five minutes of mindfulness every single night. And so I know they don't recommend that you do it while you're laying down because they're afraid you're gonna fall asleep and you really need to clear your mind. But there's three to five minutes, so I was able to lie down, all ready for sleep, go through my mindfulness meditation, and I gotta tell you, within, it must have been within a week or two, I felt more calm at work, I felt less reactionary, I was happier, I felt better. So it's something that's really important to do, and, and I think that everyone in today's world where we have devices, emails, text messages, 
multitasking our brain all day long, we have a trouble focusing on one thing because our focus is being pulled in so many directions that it's important to do a strategy or something to get yourself a good night's sleep so that you can be prepared to have the best attention and the focus that you can the next day. So in slide number six, here are some of the effects from doing mindfulness meditation on a regular basis. This was research again from the National Institute of Health. <clears throat> it reduced high blood pressure. It reduced the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. People had reduced flare-ups with ulcerative colitis, reduced anxiety, reduced depression, and reduced insomnia. They had improved immune function in people that had HIV and cancer. It helped to support people that had stopped smoking. It improved the quality of life in people that had breast cancer. It reduced inflammation, which is something that I focus on with bodies and patients in my clinic because I'm trying to help them with their pain. Reduced ADH symptoms and reduced menopause symptoms. So just reading that, I'm sold on mindfulness meditation. And I would like to show you uh, slide number seven is a little app that I found three years ago called Mindfulness. And it was uh, $1.99 at the time, and it was the first, or 99 cents, it was the first app that I purchased, and then it went free. And now, I'm not sure where it stands right now, I need to check, I think it's a free trial, and maybe then you have to buy it. But what I loved about the Mindfulness app, it has that little icon with the person, the white person in the meditation pose, is it's very quick, there's guided meditations, or silent meditation. So if you're a beginner and I was a beginner, I felt it very helpful to listen to somebody because my inner voice was saying, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. How am I gonna get that done? Oh my gosh, I forgot to email that person back. I forgot to call that person back. So I'm getting stressed just talking about it, but the mindfulness app was a guided meditation that took my stress level from high to low. And it really helped me when I was a beginner to listen to someone's voice and pay attention, pay attention to what she was saying. So if you get this app, there's many different ones. This is the one that I've used and recommended. If we go to slide eight, it's easy. You open up the app, you click get started, and then, or, or, and that'll give you a tutorial. Or what I do is I go to the time sessions, I clicked on time sessions, and then in image number nine, I click on either three minutes, five minutes, which is talking continuously, or you can go to 10 minutes or 15 minutes where there's breaks in time. So that's what I like to do. But if you see on the bottom, you can click the little button off of guided and you could pick nice forest music or rain sounds. So to wrap it up, I just wanted to provide for you the strategies to help you decrease your stress, get a better night's sleep and be in less pain. Thank you so much for joining Movement Matters and thank you ThinkTech Hawaii and all of our sponsors and donors for having us on today. Mahalo.